So what we're most interested in is the concept of the normal curve. And in terms of the normal curve, first we're going to look at something that's close to it in its discrete form. So remember with discrete, we can be listing a table where all the outcomes are listed and so are their probabilities. Or we could be using a histogram, which really I should be using class midpoints down below, but and their probabilities are listed as heights for the tops of our histogram bars. So what ends up happening though is when it comes to a normal distribution, we can't do that. The reason is a normal distribution is going to describe continuous data with an infinite number of outcomes, so it won't be possible to use the table or a graph above. Really what ends up happening is we want to use the histogram above, but we can't. We have to use some sort of modified version where because we have an infinite number of outcomes, it's almost like we need an infinite number of bars in between each bar. So you keep getting more and more bars listed until eventually you end up what we have here, is what just looks like a curve that's filled in. So let's go ahead and talk about that curve. Specifically, that curve for our normal distribution is a graph. And it's a graph of continuous symmetrical bell shape curve. And we already talked about this, but the total area under that curve is going to equal 1 or 100%. And everywhere the height is 0 or some height above 0. Obviously, it can't be a height above 1 because the whole curve needs to total 1. Um, a couple other things that we should discuss is first of all, if you remember how mean stands for average and we use the symbol mu to represent a population average, we need to know that the mean is at a height, is at the highest point of the curve, which for us will be the center because it's symmetrical. And the mean, median, mode are all equal and located at the center. So the average, dead center in the middle and the most common entry are all in the same spot, which is the highest point of our curve. And we already said this above, but listing it as a fact, our curve is symmetrical, meaning the left side and the right side are mirror images of each other based about the middle. And the last thing is that the curve will never have a height of zero. So putting that more specifically, the curve never actually sits on the x-axis, the number line. It's going to get super close. It's going to look like it's sitting on it. It's going to look like it's right there touching the x-axis, but it never is. And so what will happen is, oops, is that past three standard deviations, and we'll talk more about that in a second, but it looks like the curve flattens out, but it doesn't because remember, it's never going to actually be flat because it's never going to have a height of zero.